power. No, I have the power. No, I have the power. No, I have the power. Now the print's done, there's a couple different steps in getting the finish that I want on the sword. On some 3D prints, depending on what it is, you might kind of like the texture of the print lines, but because of what I am doing here with the He-Man sword, I want it to have a little bit of a smoother texture. I'm sure that some of the print lines might show through, but that's okay. So now I have to go through all seven pieces and get all those high spots down. The Agarit sandpaper does it pretty quickly. You don't have to apply a lot of pressure, then just a few quick minutes start seeing some results. When we start moving your finger over, you can kind of feel how it's going to start smoothing down once those high parts are knocked down. Now the first pass of the sanding all finished. And even though you can still see the layer lines, when you run your finger across it, it feels a lot smoother and a lot less, notice, a lot less noticeable. But before I start assembly and continue on with the sanding and the finishing, I have a couple areas where the supports didn't stick and I had just a little bit of delamination. So I'm going to use my cutters here, cut away some of this material, and then sand a little bit more before moving on to the next step. When I was printing, I had supports that were supposed to be under this, and the supports fell off the print bed and didn't quite stick, so I got a little bit of spaghetti here. So this is going to be a little bit more work to patch up, but I'm going to trim all this away. I'll eventually be using some dap to kind of patch that in, smooth it over, and blend it in the best I can. Okay, so now that I have that all cleaned up, at least as cleaned up as it's going to get right now, I have all the stragglers trimmed and I have it kind of sanded over so at least it'll be a good transition for when I spackle this. Now the spackling I'm using is this Drydex from DAP and it's pink it doesn't have to be this color but it's kind of a nice indicator for when it dries. The other thing you want to make sure because they make this for a lot of different applications is get one that is sandable. It's probably going to give you, a, you know, the better finish that you want for a project like this. And even when I'm done I probably won't have that that full curve that I'm missing, at least you won't be able to see the print lines or the missing material here. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of work that in the best I can, let it dry, and then I'll end up sanding it. While this shape. is drying, I'm going to start assembling the top part of the sword, and to assemble it, I'm going to be using some 5 minute epoxy. The pieces have a pretty snug fit, but I'm going to try to put epoxy on both sides. So on this side, I'm just going to try brushing it on to the base here. I'd prefer not to have squeeze out, but I am gonna be sanding this a little bit more and finishing it a little bit further. So I'm gonna try not to worry about it too much. I have four of the seven pieces put together right now. And the joints aren't as perfect as I would have liked, but I was kind of planning on having to fill those in anyways. So I guess that's somewhat to be expected. I do have some lines here from the epoxy, but I think I should be able to sand that down pretty easily. Now I think I'm going to wait before I assemble anything else, especially because I need to work on this a little bit more before I attach it. And I think it's going to be easier to handle this by itself instead of having to handle it while it's attached to, you know, two feet of, of plastic right here. So I'm going to work on this just a little bit more. All the speckles dried and I shaped most of the top of both of these and they covered it pretty well. I think I could do a little bit more shaping here just to make it look a little bit rounder. I don't know if I'm going to add that much more material on top. I think it's going to make it a lot more complex and I'm worried about how this is going to accept the spray paint and the primer and then do the final assembly of the blade, the guard, and then the handle and pommel at the end. So I'm going to put those together right now, epoxy that up, and we'll go from there. This is all put together, but there's a couple quick things I need to do before I start with final paint. And that's mainly to kind of fill in these big gaps right here. If I paint it right now, it's just not gonna look right. I'm not gonna be happy with it. But I'm gonna be using an old model maker's trick of using acrylate glue or super glue 
and baking soda that should give a really hard bond in between those different areas, just in case I might want to, you know, hit something with a sword. All the glue and all of the baking soda is dry. So now I have to do the final pass to sanding before I finally get to paint this. So I was getting ready to paint the sword and I dropped it. Bungus! And in the process of dropping it, I had cracked off one of the sections here. I've already kind of repaired it with some epoxy, but I also broke the hand. So I'm glad it happened now instead of after I painted because that would have been really frustrating. But you can see I have a little spot in there. I'm going to drill into that on that side and that side. String in a wooden dowel, epoxy that in, and hopefully that'll give enough counterweight balance and a little bit more strength to prevent that from happening again. So one more step and then finally paint. Find out who has the power. Ah. Oh. Ah. What if we work together? Okay! And yet, throughout the course of history, there have been brave men and heroic women ready and eager to be the first to face the unknown, to challenge its dangers so that others might follow without fear. It is to these unsung heroes that we owe so much. See you soon with another exciting adventure. I hope you enjoyed the video. This is one of the many ways you can make your own He-Man sword. You can also make it out of wood, foam, or if you even have access to it, metal. I 3D printed mine because that's what I have access to and that's the way I wanted to create it. I'll leave a link down in the description to the Thingiverse file that was created by my good friend Mark O'Keefe from Asylum Designs. Thanks for watching. And if you like what we do here at Geek Builders, please consider contributing to our Patreon. It helps kind of keep things going here and keeps the videos coming. Before we finish, one more thing. Bye.